Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. Welcome to the Geek Group where today we're doing an equipment autopsy on an Epson Photo PC 850Z 2.1 megapixel camera that is well and truly dead. So we're going to tear into this and see what we can learn about the inside of them. I'm going to start by taking the strap off because that's just annoying and gets in my way. You can save the straps from old cameras. They work great with Nerf guns, just so you know. If, if you're a member of the Geek Group Zombie Team, which you should be, if you're anywhere in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area, you should come out and hunt zombies with us. So we've got that, and it's a nifty little Epson strap. Epson isn't a sponsor of the Geek Group, but they should be. So what do we got here? Let's check. All we, oh, hey, bonus memory card. Oh, yeah. Check that out, 8 meg, 8 megabyte, and it's a special digital photo card that looks curiously exactly like a compact flash card. But yep, there's your 8 meg compact flash card. So, now you see, don't throw these away, these are actually useful. Um, you can get little uh, IDE to compact flash card adapters. And this could be the main drive in like uh, a monowall setup or something like that. Monowall will run off a single floppy. And a single floppy is only 1.4 meg. So if it'll fit on 1.4 meg, it'll fit on 8 meg. You can, you can still use 8 meg stuff, especially when you get into like embedded Linux stuff. So we don't have any other memory cards in there. Push for batteries. Ooh, ooh, look at, look at that. Battery gunge. See that? That is why. If you have an electronic device that you're gonna let sit on its own, like on a shelf or in storage or something for really any length of time, it, it, anything more than like a week, take the batteries out of it because they gunge up and they look like that. That's oxidation. Oh, these see, these were decent batteries too. These are nickel metal hydride rechargeables from Maxell. So see, that was, that was a decent battery at one point. That is toast. So we're just going to pull these right out of here. Because see, if you leave the batteries in it, when you put it into storage, the battery gunge contaminates the contacts in here, and it's all corroded now and nasty. And yeah, see, that, that may be what originally killed this camera. So that's, that's screwed. So we don't have to mess with that. And there's, there's corrosion down inside there, too, you can see. So that's, that's pretty well screwed. Now let's start taking off screws. I don't think there's any other external stuff. Wow, look at that vintage. Look at the size of that USB plug on there. That's huge. I don't think that's USB, is it? There's no USB symbol, but I think it's USB. Uh, USB 1.0. All right, now we've got a handful of screwdrivers here, so let's grab the appropriate size and start digging into this. I'm just taking out whatever screws I happen to see next. There's no order to this because these are all outer housing screws, so I'm just grinding right through because there's a lot of them. And if you have an old Epson Photo PC 850Z, you're welcome to follow along at home because you're probably not using it anymore. And if you are, well, it's time you got a new camera. I wonder how much this thing cost back in the day. Now, you're not going to find any really useful stuff in here. Like with a modern day camera, you can get a little capacitor discharge units, like the little disposable cameras that you can get at, I don't know, the local pharmacy sells them over here. But you can get little disposable cameras that have flash units in them that make great little pulse power supplies, especially if you're doing things on the cheap. But this doesn't have a flash or anything like that, so no such luck. Mm. 
Now, if you notice the lights flicker during today's video shoot, the reason for that is the epic storms that are blasting across the central United States today. This is, uh, we're shooting this video, uh, what is the date today, huh? The 27th. It is the 27th of October, 2010. And I'm sure this particular storm system is making the news where you live. Yesterday, which really would have been the best day to shoot videos down in a basement, um, we had the tornado sirens in Grand Rapids went off seven times in one afternoon. We are based in southwest Michigan and tornadoes are a regular occurrence. We don't get them like, you know, like Kansas does. I wish we did, it'd be really cool. But uh, we, we got our tornado dosage for the year and it was fun. I like tornadoes. We don't get nearly enough. But I'm twisted like that and I'm one of those guys that when the rest of the world is like, get in the basement and huddle in your bunker, I'm standing in the backyard with a camera. So yeah. I don't recommend that you do such a thing, but if you do, get good video. Maybe the last one you shoot. See, that's the kind of thing that they can't yell at me for recommending people to do because anybody who goes out shooting video in a tornado and dies doing it, they're not going to sue us. So, just saying. Got that going for me. So I never understand why they, they yelled at like Eminem when he tells people to kill themselves. He's told people to kill themselves. Yeah, but anybody who's dumb enough to kill themselves because Eminem told them to really probably has much more serious problems than anything that Eminem is exacerbating. Just saying. Sitting with video games and violence. Oh man, don't even get me started on violence and video games. Ah! Violence and video games, hell, how about violence and camera equipment autopsies? How many camera autopsies have we done that involved the Gallagher hammer? One. No, we've done a couple. I, I like that hammer. The only reason that hammer doesn't get used more often lately is because it's packed away in a Gaylord <laughs> waiting for us to have the new lab. We need a new lab. So donate. Yes, you should donate. Say, if you like these videos, if you like watching camera autopsies and equipment autopsies and things like, you know, giant robots and that, you guys have no idea how much money these videos cost to make. It's, it is not cheap. And we're, we're doing that, we're funding this. We make these videos, they're, they're free, we put them out there. You'll notice that we don't have really commercials. I mean, Volcano's a sponsor, we do some stuff for them, but that's the only company we've ever had any kind of a commercial in a Geek Group video for. And all this stuff is done out of pocket. We do this because we like it. None of us get paid. Corey doesn't get paid. Wish I got paid. Wish you got paid. Never will. <laughs> we, we do this because we love technology, because we love teaching people about this stuff, because we like exploring stuff. And that's the whole point of it. So we want to get a big lab and do this stuff and help teach millions of people about everything there is to know about science and technology and all kinds of stuff. And that is why we need your help. You should donate and help us do this. Now here we've got a pile of screws. That's, that's all the screws I just took out. And we don't need that. So we'll set those aside. Now we get a look at the back here. Now there's some neat things immediately apparent. First off, there's this big round thing. Now if you look, there's a little coil of wire and it's, it's hard to see, it's transparent. But that's actually a speaker. It's the same kind of speaker that's commonly found in cheap headphones. Now we've got these, which are little tiny push buttons. They're really nice little tiny push buttons. And we've got some connectors and we've got... If I didn't know better, I'd say that was a microphone. I, I honestly don't know, but it looks, it looks like a microphone. So we're going to check into that. I don't know why. There would be a mic on the back of the camera, but let's look here. Yeah, it's a microphone. There's, if you look on the back of the camera, there's a little microphone symbol and a hole, and that's at the same spot that that would be. So it is a microphone. There's, there is indeed a microphone on the back of this camera. I have no, maybe for voice memos when you're recording video or recording pictures or stuff. I've got one screw I can't get out. I'll try a slightly smaller screwdriver and see if that'll help. 
No. Let's try a different screwdriver. Got one stuck really thoroughly in there. All the other screws came right out. This one screw might be a little stripped or something, so let's whack it. It's down in the, the battery doom area. So it's kind of gungy and corroded. There we go. If you can't get a screw out, sometimes it helps to line the screwdriver up really perfectly with it and tap it with a motivational hammer. You have to use a motivational hammer to help motivate it out of the damn hole. Need to get that off. Avert your eyes! Come on. There we go. I win! <laughs> I'm a winner! Yay! Yeah, that screw's pooched. All right, I'm just gonna, I, I was able to get it out enough that I think I can get a pair of needle nose on it. Huh? Or not. And if I can't, I can just reef the piece out around it. Thankfully, that screw is not holding anything terribly important. There, got that. Oh yeah. Nice and easy. There. And there's the, oh, the screw is still in there. There's the screw, right there. I hate that screw. That's my like screw that of screw. doom. Yeah, you like that screw? Yeah. You're gonna find that screw. It's gonna be in your oatmeal tomorrow. All right, so let's see if we can get the front off. Oh yeah. Oh, it's getting sexy now. Okay. Oh wow, check this out. We've got, I'm gonna unplug that. And I think, is there a plug, is there a plug, is there a plug? Yes, there's a plug. Okay, let's get that plug out and feed that around. So not coming out easily. Oh, there's another plug up there, okay. So we've got two plugs. I have no idea what this one does, but that's, oh, that's so cool. All right, check it out. It's got this nifty shutter on the front, and on the back of that shutter, it's got the little motor that makes the shutter move, and the motor turns a worm gear, and the worm gear has a little gear here, and I gotta, I gotta figure out how to open that up. Let's take this out. Actually, too small. Having a fair bit of difficulty finding screwdrivers that fit the weird screws in this. Their, their screws are all really shallow. In the assembly of this camera, my screwdrivers are kind of deep. But I'm going to take this little motor off. Pop that out of there. Now, if you look, the little motor spins a gear, which turns that gear, and that gear turns this big ring gear down here. And when the ring gear moves, the iris opens. And there's a spring that fights against it, so it does that. It's really neat. It's, it's just a, a simple shutter type setup. It's, it's much more a shutter than an iris. And this, this is just the, the main outer, like you turn the camera on, thing opens. And when it opens, there's, yeah, there's, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them really well, but if you look right, I need a pointy thing. If you look right there, see that little nub? I'm using a black thing to point out a black thing inside a black hole. I love video. but. <laughs> If you see that little nub right there, 
that's the closed nub. And if you look down here, that's the open nub right there. And there's two switches here. There's a switch there and a switch here. So if you watch, when it comes around to open, you can see the nub. Okay, see the nub just dive right up there? That's, that's the open nub, and it's right there. That, that one's the open nub. Now as we go around to closed, you'll see the closed nub come down, and it goes under the thing. So these two switches tell the camera computer when it's open or when it's closed. And it's a really nifty bit of engineering to do that. I mean, that's, that took work. So I have no idea what we'll do with that. Probably nothing. I'll probably throw it away in mere seconds. But it's really clever. I like that. I like clever. So that's that. I'm going to set that aside. because That might need playing with in the future. All right, we've got a Epson digital camera lens. And it gives us the lens specifications that are f6.5, 19.5 millimeter, 1 to 2.0, or 1, the ratio is 1 to 2.0 to 2.8. So that's our basic specs on the lens, which is probably a really crappy plastic bit of lens in there. So yeah, I, I'm not expecting much. Let's dig down into the next level of stuff. Now we've got pretty much the entire outer housing off. Now there's no flash unit on this camera, so we don't really have to worry about any high voltage or anything like that. Oh, I see that. I start talking and I'm a moron because right there is very obviously a little flash thing. So that tells us there is some high voltage in here somewhere. Yeah, that's a little xenon strobe tube. So that's probably got a, a 300 volt power supply to go with it. I'm so used to shooting pictures with modern video cameras that don't have flashes that I had totally forgotten that, oh yeah, the little pocket, because I got a little pocket camera, but I never use mine to take stills. I never take still pictures. Except, you know, those of your mom. But Welcome even most of that was video. Welcome to 1995. Yeah. I'm just working my way through the next set of little screws. Thankfully, this has been turned off for what I'm guessing is years, so I'm really not worried about any residual charge on the capacitor in there. Imagine I'm pretty safe. There's a lot of little screws in building one of these. Let's see where we go. That's pretty much all the front. Oh, no, we got one over here. Okay, now let's get the whole next layer of stuff out. There's a lot of little screws in there. I'm trying to keep them all so we can count them afterwards. So we've got the top plate there, which comes off. Now we've got another plug. Now this plug goes to this, which is kind of weird looking. Oh, that's the bottom of the hot shoe, which is an actual hot shoe. You can see there's, that's an electrical connection, that's an electrical connection. So that's just basically a trigger. And that's just a metally bit. Not a whole lot to it. But that's the, the bottom of the hot shoe plate there. So then we get into here where we've got the little display screen. This is all the stuff on top of the camera. We're down into the front where we've got all the little screws out here and here. So let's, I want to get, oh, well, that, that was easy. Okay, now we've got, here's the button assembly, 
with the knob and the actual button for the camera and there's the inside of it. There's really nothing to that at all. So yeah, that's boring. All right, let's get into the cool stuff. Take off this. See, these screws should come out with just the lightest of fingertip pressure, but they're in there pretty ferociously. I don't see any obvious signs of serious damage inside the camera. I'm guessing what killed it was totally the batteries because you can tell if a camera is, you know, a lot of, a lot of common problems from are like flooding or impact damage or something like that. It'll have been dropped. Um, this camera doesn't have any, any signs of impact trauma or having been dropped or anything like that. I'm pretty sure what actually killed this camera was just somebody left crappy rechargeable batteries in it and they corroded and they killed the camera that way. But the, the camera proper, like you can see inside here, you can see a lot of corrosion on the, the contacts. These are the bottom of the battery connections. You can see there's a lot of corrosion and stuff. You can clean that off. Um, one of the best things to clean off corrosion, especially if it's down inside a little pocket like that, and it can be really hard to get to, get a brand new pencil with the pink eraser on the end and a brand new pencil with a brand new unused pink eraser. The eraser is mildly abrasive. It's not abrasive enough where it's going to destroy your camera and you're going to want to make sure to clean all the little gunge out of the bike, you know, because you're going to have the little eraser nubblies. When, when you do that, but stick an eraser down inside the battery hole because it'll reach right in there. You just right on the end of the pencil. And if you're really motivated, put chuck the pencil in a, uh, a small cordless drill and just stick that right in there. And you can use that to put a mirror finish on the most nastiest corroded old battery contacts you've ever seen. This has worked for me every single time I've ever done it. Here's our little speaker which we will be using in an upcoming video, but you can bet that works. Um, but yeah, just a plain old number two pencil, stick the eraser right up inside the battery holes and spin it and just scrub it. You can do it by hand, just scrub it. it. Takes a while, you gotta want it, but really how much do you want that camera? If it's worth it, you'll do it, it'll work, you'll be happy, you'll write me fan mail saying, that was the greatest thing ever, I stuck a pencil in my camera and I saved it, and I love you so much, you're the greatest guy in the whole world, I love you just like you. Because, you know, people do that. Yeah. So what else we got? We've got, uh, getting this card off, but it's rather rigidly mounted here. Because I got stuffs, I don't know, I got a wire on the back. Okay, there's there's a hard soldered wire. Let's grab some cutters. We'll cut that wire. We don't need that, and we don't need this one up front, which look kind of kind of afterthought, kind of hacky. All right. So we've got that circuit board with a lot of little buttons on it. You can desolder those and use them for something else. Kind of neat. And we've got we get our microphone now. There's the microphone which is a little tiny electric condenser microphone. This would be great for project use. It even has a little rubber isolation mount, but that's, that's a nifty little mic. They're very simple. Um, this is an electric condenser microphone. So what that means is a, a dynamic microphone is like that. A dynamic microphone is just a little coil with a magnet and a diaphragm. An electric condenser microphone is actually a capacitor. It is a, an air pressure variable capacitor, pretty much and they require a small biasing power supply. So you can learn all about electric condenser microphones at the link in the video right there. So yeah, electric condenser microphones are pretty cool. We, we like condenser microphones, we use them in the studio. In fact, the microphone you're listening to right here is a condenser microphone. And uh, yeah, all right, now where do we go next? I've got this really weird shutter thing happening here. I don't know what it is, I think it has to do with the backlight for the screen. It may be that the backlight on this LCD is always on and flipping this long shutter is how you turn it on or off. But like electrically it's always on. And there's the shutter there because it leads like, yeah, that's, that's the backlight down in there. You can see right down in there, you can see the reflectors and that. So it's really weird. I have no idea. 
and I didn't examine it when we were at that stage because really who thinks about the backlight on your camera? So this was not my camera originally. I never used it. So I, there's a lot in the operation side of things that I simply don't know because it wasn't my camera. Somebody donated this camera to the group, showed up at the lab on our doorstep last week down in Keizu, and the security guys saw it and said, hey, there's, there's these boxes of stuff out here. You might want to check this out. And we want to thank whoever donated this stuff because it was really great getting boxes that smelled like cat pee. That was nice. Dude, I just, I just want people to be aware that while we do sincerely appreciate the donations of equipment that we get, it's really cool. I mean, I'm taking this apart, made this video possible because somebody was kind enough to dig something out of their basement and give it to us. While I do sincerely appreciate that, there are times when we don't want your donation. If the reason, if the only reason that you want to give us a bunch of stuff is because you don't want this cool electronics anymore because your cat peed all over the box, we don't want it either. It's okay, because it's not even my cat. I don't like your cat. I think your cat sucks. And I think your cat's pee stinks. So here's our little display screen, and there's a lot of electronics on there. There's big NEC chip. Here, we'll flip it around. This is an NEC Delta 78063 Gamma Charlie Alpha 25 chip. I have absolutely no idea what it is. There's a lot of little SMT stuff on there. I don't know what any of it is as far as details. Like, I can tell you that, you know, that's a capacitor and what else is on there? You can identify some little resistors and some little capacitors. It's really tiny stuff. But as far as exactly what it is, I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Even Kidwell wouldn't know that. But he's looking it up right now. He's sitting at home, bored, and he's on findchips.com. And he's looking up that chip number that I just rattled off. And he's going to call me in 10 minutes going, Ah, it was a display driver thing for the, it's got a 8-bit digital I.O. for the display driver, and it's got a buffer, and, and he's going to rant for like 20 minutes about it. Because he's kid well, and that's what he does, and that's why we love him. Hey, you can't make any fun of him. You've been watching me for 20 minutes now, haven't you? And I'm just taking a camera apart, and it's fun, and you're enjoying this. So shut up. You can't make fun of him for it. You're just as big a dork as we are. Because if you're watching this video, if you're still watching this video, you're a dork. It's okay. We're here for you. It's why, it's why the geek group exists, is to support your dorkiness. It's what we do. Get out of my way. Just, we don't, don't need any of that. Uh-oh. Okay, we might have needed that. What is that? What is that? Is that a fuse? I think it's a fuse. I think it's a fuse. I will not come off. I'm just cutting it off. All right. Now, check this out. A little bit of cool. I got a little thing that I think is a fuse. It looks like a fuse. It feels like a fuse. It's covered in gunge. Let's peel the gunge away. Now, we've got two leads there. Those are obviously power leads. And soldered right into them is... It's marked 250 volt, 3 amp, Y3, TAM. I'm saying that's a 3 amp fuse. Which is weird because it's on the black... Oh, hang on. Sorry. I <laughs> All right, so here's what I found there. Check this out. There's this little thing. It's labeled Y3, TAM, 250 volt, 3 amp. It's got to be a fuse. But what's weird is it's soldered on the black lead. Now, usually fuses go on the hot or positive lead. It's, it's kind of unusual to see the negative, the, the ground side fused, but that's how they did it. It doesn't really matter on a battery-powered thing, but it bugs me. It's just not how it's done. There's a system to these things. Don't <coughs> need that. Oh. I have the noisiest trash can in the world. Do you ever notice that? It's just evil loud. Bang, bang, bang. My trash can, which is next to me, is actually not just a regular trash can. 
It's a burn can. It's a fireproof trash can. It's got like special self-closing lid and stuff. So that's why it makes so much noise. It's got a big metal lid on it. Because every now and then, I have a tendency to play with fire. <laughs> I like fire. And uh, it's important, it's very, very important that we have a trash can that we can toss things into in a hurry when they're on fire because from time to time, things can get a little exciting down here. I really want to, I want to get down to that image sensor. And the image sensor is at the very heart of the camera. So that's, that's our goal is to get down to that image sensor chip to get a real look at it. Because you'd be surprised how tiny the image sensor can be in one of these cameras. Oh, also, I've come to the point where not only have I proven there is a big capacitor power supply in here, but I found it. There is the big capacitor on the side right there. There's a sticker under it. But we'll peel that off. And there's our big lytic which is probably around 300 volts. We'll, we'll dig into that in a second and we'll find out for sure. But we're, we're almost there. Um, I think we can just about get this off though. Oh yeah, there we go. Come on. Oh, there's a cable on the back. There we go. And we'll pop off that cable and we'll pop off that cable. Now look, we've got our image sensor. Okay, that's our, that's the entire, that's the actual camera right there. That's the lenses and everything. All of our zoom, these are going to be our zoom and focus controls. Um, there's a little wheel on the side that we, if we move the little wheel, we might be able to see something happen or not. Okay. Totally can't. The wheel sucks. The wheel failed me. Let's take off. Wow. That's a really thick, really, really thick shield. It's gummy. It's a, uh, like, feels like dynamat kind of. Dynamat is a thick rubbery mat that is used in cars a lot for sound control to handle, to, to eliminate resonance and vibration. We use it a lot in building recording studios. Okay, now I took all the screws out. Now let's open this up. And there it is. Look at that. That is a beautiful little thing. That's what this whole camera is built around. It's that little tiny piece of glass, that little chip there. That is the actual image sensor. That is the eye of the camera. Deep down inside the lens, under everything, it's all about that little chip. And here, there's a protective window. I'll peel that off. And this is probably a IR filter or something along those lines. And that little tiny thing in there, that's the actual image sensor. Now look how tiny that is compared to my fingernail. So here, let's, let's see if we can figure out just how big that image sensor is. We happen to have a nifty little measurement device which still has dead batteries. Like the dead batteries in our calipers are becoming the stuff of legend. Now I'm going to this will be an approximate measurement, but the actual image sensor is just about 0.2 inches wide. And then we'll go here, and it is just about 0.25 inches long. So you can bet the marketing guys are going to say that's a quarter inch image sensor. And there's only one. It's a, a single CCD. I don't know if it's CCD or CMOS. I have no idea, but we'll, we'll say it's CCD. Probably is. Um, and we'll put a link right here to CCD. Now, image sensors come in two types. They come in CCD and they come in CMOS, CMOS. And so there's your link to CCD. And there's your link to CMOS. Okay? So now you've got them both. And it's a really cool thing to read about. Image sensors are really amazing technology. It, people think that video technology, like the actual the codecs and technology behind it are like this amazing stuff that no human can ever understand. And it's really not the case. It's not, it's not that complicated, especially nowadays. 
we're smart people. You're a smart guy. You're watching our video. You're into this kind of thing. You should, you should, yeah, there are girls that watch our videos. Not enough. More women should. A lot more women should. Corey's mom watches our videos. She totally does. She wants me. Oh, yeah. You can tell. Hi, Corey's mom, if you're watching us. I've tried to get her to subscribe. Yeah? And she's like, well, why don't you just send me a link? I'm like, go on to YouTube and subscribe. And she's like, why don't I have a YouTube account? I'm like, do you have an email? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, then you can subscribe. And she's like, you should just send me a link. <laughs> why are you so mean to your sainted mother? I love that woman. She's so nice. She's always so nice to me, and she's always so mean to you, and I think that's why I like that woman, <laughs> is that she's really nice to me, and she's really mean to you. And I, I really, I like anybody that's mean to Corey. Just saying. <laughs> All right, so we're down into the lens. I want to I wanna get, for me, the little prize in any camera I take apart is almost always the iris. I'm, I'm nuts for irises. I think they're cool. It's just one of those little things. Like, Billy is nuts for heat sinks. That's his thing. He's nuts for heat sinks. I have a particular little thing for irises. And, you know, girls with big brown eyes. So there's your, your iris joke there. Oh, yeah. Really Shut up. It's the best I got. Oh, hey, there we go. That just falls right out. Okay, don't need that, don't need that. I got a lot of gears all of a sudden. I got, I got stuff happening here. There's lots of little gears there. All right, let's get into... Oh yeah, we definitely found the focus mojo. It's kinda, kinda sticking. Ah! There we go. It just required a little bit of muscle. There's got to be like a motor down in here. So, oh wow, that's that's just nuts. Look at that. Whee! That's really neat. You just turn the thing. It's really hard to photograph because everything here is matte black. That's that's the downside of lenses. But if you look on the side, you can see it. Yeah, that that probably be like a macro mode way out like that where it comes back a little bit. See? That's probably your macro mode there. And you, if you look down in there, I see a coil. I see a coil. So that tells me it's probably a motor or something or a locking pin or something. I don't know, maybe a solenoid. But there's a coil in there, so there's something happening. Um, come out. Oh, there we go. Okay, we can push it right out the tube. Now we've got a little bit of glass or more probably plastic. It's cheap lens, guys. What do you want? Come on. Be nice. All right, we've got we've got some optics mojo here. Um, I have to. Oh look, C clips. It's time for Gerber Ninja. Come on, you didn't think I'd make it through the whole video without having to get a Gerber out at some point, did you? Look, pops those little E clips out. Why why do you hate the Gerber Ninja, Corey? Why do you love the Gerber? Because it's a thing. Because I love my Gerber. I've carried a Gerber. I've had a sense I've also a little boy into the old country. Oh, wow. Oh, that's neat. That's really neat. Oh, that is just... Shut up. <laughs> You're such a dick to me. You're such a dick to me. All right. Check this out. All right. I gotta, I gotta zoom. I, I think I actually have to zoom in further to see this here. If, if the zoom will take it. All right. Now... I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but you can see through the iris, right? This little solenoid, that, which is as big as my fingernail, this little solenoid, when you push it down, closes a separate shutter, okay? You can see the iris there, and if you look closely, you can see that there's a two-leaf clamshell shutter that closes. It's not an iris, it's a shutter. Because an iris is, is the center aperture there. That's an iris. And that iris is controlled by that little thing there, that to, which is probably either a multi-step solenoid or a, even a little tiny motor. 
Let's see if we can get into it. There's an itty bitty screw. Itty itty bitty screw. I really don't want to break this and it's going to be hard not to. Because not only is it the tiniest screw ever, it's actually got glue on it. All right, let's get rid of the little screw. Let's look at this. I'm going to see if I can pop that off. Okay. There's a little tiny gear. And we got some wires and some sensors and stuff we don't need. So we get that out of there and we'll break that off there. So we got rid of the little motor. Now down inside there is a gear. Well, that makes life easier. All right, now I have to be careful not to press the other button and at the same time actuate this lever here, this, this ring gear. And by moving the gear, I can open the iris. So I can open the iris all the way out and then if I push my little sh shutter, that closes. So here we can flip it over. You can see the, the two leaves of the shutter. And that's what this does. So that's really cool. That is, that's an iris plus shutter. And we have this little thing. Now I want to see if that's, yeah, that's a motor that spins freely. So that is a tiny little motor. And there's a lot of wires going to it. There's, there's four wires to that motor. It might actually be a little stepper motor. I don't know. It's neat. That bears further investigation. All right, so we got all that, and we got a rather craptacular lens there, which we don't care about. And we got this, which has another little tiny motor on it and another little tiny motor on it. So we got three of those itty-bitty little motors. I'm going to set those aside because I'm thinking there may be, if those are solenoids if they're or something like that, there may be some laser galvo servo action happening in the near future. Now check this out. Look at that. That is, the, um, this is my pinky, okay? It's my pinky finger for scale. That is the tiniest little planetary gear drive I've ever seen. <laughs> it's so cute! Look at that little dude there, little planetary gear drive. Is it called planetary oh. gear drive a dude? No, it's the cutest little dude ever. <laughs> it's neat. I like planetary gear drives. I think they're cool. Shut up! It's engineering, dude. I like engineering. I like precision. I like, I like fine precision engineering. And yet somehow you're my friend. I don't, I don't get that. I just don't understand. Oh, I know why. It's because your mom pays me. You know she pays me like 50 bucks a week to be your friend, right? Completely fine with it. Okay. You're just fine because I let you go to the LCD sound system concert last night. Yeah. Yeah. So how was that? Did you have fun? Yes. Is it a good show? Yes, very good. You went Probably to possibly their second to last show. Why? Because uh, there's a rumor that James Murphy is going to retire the LCD sound system moniker after this tour ends. Okay. So actually, I take that back. There's quite possibly his his second to last North American show. Okay. But it was a good show. But it's not like he's going to blow his head off or something. He's just retiring that particular thing. He's still going to be making music uh, and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe he will blow his head off. Maybe no, maybe he'll blow his head off and this would be like the, the foretelling video. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, it could happen. I could get lucky. Like Trent Reznor is retiring Nine Inch Nails for now, but he's still working on the project. Okay. I have no idea what this This is the viewfinder? And it does, it, it does nothing. There's a little slider adjuster thing here. That, oh, hang on. Okay. Oh, I got to wire up my nose. Ah. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. Terribly funny. All right, take a look here. We've got this, which is our little viewfinder assembly. There's a little click thing, which I think is a diopter adjustment or something for people that wear glasses. And then there's this little rolly, scrolly thing. You can see the, the big worm gear on the tube. And that moves that little actuator there back and forth. And that adjusts. It's really cool. Check that out. I just noticed that. Okay, watch how, watch how it moves. 
there's two different scroll functions on it. So that's a zero. Now as you roll through, you can see the key comes across and it grabs the first one and the first one starts moving. And then when it gets out to right there, okay, it grabs the second one and the second one starts moving and follows down to the first. That's really cool. Now what that's doing is moving those two little lenses. There's, there's a couple lens elements inside this and it's moving those and it, there's some amazing math involved there to do that level of engineering. That's really slick. And in moving those optics, it, it, it's a telescope. It's basically a little adjustable telescope. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's a much simpler version of the optics that are happening inside the main lens to allow that to do zoom. But it's, it's pretty much the same thing. It's dumbed down, it's simplified, but it's pretty much the same thing. All right, now I need you. Okay, we're into there. I'm hitting that time, Corey, where I'm starting to run out of screws. There's a lot of stuff in this little camera. I expected this to be way simpler, but this is... I love cameras. Cameras are one of my favorite equipment autopsies because there's always so much stuff. Many layers of intricacy to tear into and explore. It's really cool. This one was very track record with them. Yeah, we've... This is like... What, we had two fail? See, not, not all the equipment autopsies that we shoot do you actually get to see. Like, we did one for this lens. And that's as far as I got into that lens. It's this evil Soligor lens that beat me. Um, we had a camera that was heavily damaged in flooding. And it was really cool because it was a film camera. I took a hammer to that thing and still couldn't get it apart. So, yeah, we, we had a couple failed equipment autopsies. We had like a little string of them there for a while. But I would say now we're back on track. Hey, Corey. Hey, what? Inside this Epson brand camera, you know what I found? Please tell me it's like a Sony brand something. It's Sanyo brand uh, processor, and that, that seems to be like the main processor or something. It's a really big chip right in the middle of the camera. Just saying, it's in there. So, see, that one of the cool things about doing these autopsies is you get to learn who really makes stuff. Like, Sony makes stuff for a lot more cameras than just Sony makes. Now, Sony makes cameras, but there's a lot of other people out there that use Sony brains in their own brand cameras. So, if you keep an eye out for that, you'll see it a lot. All right, now we've got this obnoxious housing system. Yeah, that's totally the backlight for the LCD. Was there a screw I missed? There was a screw hidden under this that I missed because it was hidden under there is why I missed it. But let's see if I can get that around. No, nope, that's on that side. So I pull that out. We've got the pink wire because it's breast cancer month or something. They use pink wire there. Um, now this is the LCD, which is really serious LCD. It's very thick, it's very rugged. Uh, it's got a great backlight set up on it. But that's the LCD, and here's the backlight power supplies. There'll be a backlight probably right along the bottom. There'll be a little tube for the backlight, but those are your power supply feeds for that. Um, this is a compact flash memory card holder, lots of processing. This is the brains of the camera. And then there's our IO port, that's our USB out. And there's really nothing to see on that side. And then this is the other main guts where we've just got lots of circuit board, nothing terribly interesting. We've got our strobe. Oh, oh, I promised you. I know there's people like, no, no, I see a capacitor. I see the high voltage. Ah. Okay, we'll dig down into it. So here is our capacitor, the big lytic cap. And it is, look, I told you it'd be 300 volts. See, it's 330 volts, 160 microfarads, photo flash rated capacitor and it was made by Rubicon. Rubicon, which is either a really bad convention for people that are jewelers or it's 
a yum cha company out of China that makes capacitors and a bunch of other stuff. Now you'll notice when I did that, I turned my face away because when you got a capacitor off, sometimes it'll have a little charge, you make a little argument. It's always keep that out. But this is this is long since dead. Now if this was charged and I did that, it hurt. Um, one of the really I don't recommend you do this at home because you're a special level of dick if you do. But you can take capacitors like this and spread the leads far apart. Now you know it says right under 330 volts, 330 volts. So you charge this up with like a pair of clip leads that you might have sitting back here. You charge this up off a 300 volt power supply. You get a good, you know, charge around. Now that's not going to kill anybody. But if you take this, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is if you walk into a room and just go, hey Corey, and just toss something small like that at somebody, go, hey dude, here. They're going to catch. It's people's natural reaction. Go, oh, ah. <laughs> And if what they catch happens to have two electrodes out the end with a 300 volt capacitor on it, they'll go, pow! And then they'll, you know, hate you and pee on your pillow. So, yeah. But that is our equipment autopsy for, I don't even remember the model, but it's the title of this video, so I'm sure you know the model of it. But that's, that's everything we got. Now let's take a look here and see. I want to keep that. I want to keep that. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about that. Or that, or that, or those. I want to keep this little infrared filter could be cool. I'm going to keep that. Let me keep the memory card. But I'm going to make, oh, I'm going to keep that microphone. Okay, now all the little parts I keep there are going in the Geek Group archives where you can come down and use them for a project. That's what we usually do when we come across neat stuff, when we're going through junk. Now, Look at this. That, which is over here. Doo, doo, doo. I am totally, there we go, focus, okay. That pile, of, that is all the screws that came out of there. And that's probably not even all of them. There's probably a couple still left in the pile or something. And we got all the screws and we got my favorite little thing. Whoop. Planetary gear drive. That just makes my whole day better. Just knowing that, that little planetary gear drives like that exist. If I still had my ear pierced, I would wear that as an earring. I would wear that as jewelry. Weird. It's just that cool. I love it. I love planetary gear drives. Yes, I'm weird. No, it's too tiny for a cuffle. Um, I can make it a tie pin. I can totally make that a tie pin. You may see this in an upcoming video. Okay. So, I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. The crazy guy behind the cameras over there is Corey. You guys have fun. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and donate. We need your help to keep building Avalon. That is our goal. We want to get out of this little studio and get back into a big lab. We want to build a national science center here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And to do that, we need your help. So please donate. Watch to the end of the video. There's links at the end where you can become a member, where you can donate, where you can do all kinds of stuff. But come down, get involved, and figure out a really cool use for this thing. Okay? There's, we got three of these little motors Okay, that gives us X, Y, and Z. That means there's laser mojo happening there. Or maybe we'll just silver this little speaker. Evaporative deposit a little silver reflective coating on there and do some laser stuff with that. But yes, there's laser stuff coming up in the future. But that's another video. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. You guys have fun. We'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.